Ten before the hour. We are uh, participating as listeners in the State of the Union uh, message from the president. And we're going to hang with this um, as uh, we promised to some of our affiliates. Let's go back to it, Kathy. $14,500 a year. Even with the tax relief we put in place, a family with two kids that earns the minimum wage still lives below the poverty line. That's wrong. That's why since the last time this Congress raised the minimum wage, 19 states have chosen to bump theirs even higher. Tonight, let's declare that in the wealthiest nation on earth, no one who works full time should have to live in poverty and raise the federal minimum wage to $9 an hour. We should be able to get that done. This single step would raise the incomes of millions of working families. It could mean the difference between groceries or the food bank, rent or eviction, scraping by or finally getting ahead. For businesses across the country, it would mean customers with more money in their pockets. And a whole lot of folks out there would probably need less help from government. In fact, working folks shouldn't have to wait year after year for the minimum wage to go up while CEO pays has never been higher. So here's an idea that Governor Romney and I actually agreed on last year. Let's tie the minimum wage to the cost of living so that it finally becomes a wage you can live on. Tonight, let's also recognize that there are communities in this country where, no matter how hard you work, it is virtually impossible to get ahead. Factory towns decimated from years of plants packing up, inescapable pockets of poverty, urban and rural, where young adults are still fighting for their first job. America is not a place where the chance of birth or circumstance should decide our destiny. And that's why we need to build new ladders of opportunity into the middle class for all who are willing to climb them. Let's offer incentives to companies that hire Americans who got what it takes to fill that job opening but have been out of work so long that no one will give them a chance anymore. Let's put people back to work rebuilding vacant homes and run-down neighborhoods. And this year, my administration will begin to partner with 20 of the hardest-hit towns in America to get these communities back on their feet. He didn't. Yes, he did. Did you see Boner just sit there and blow his nose? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that on a State of the Union. To God, his anger, Jim. I thought he was reaching for his little bottle or some flask there. I don't know. Brings on a handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Ted Nugent is smearing his feces on the walls yet. We want to encourage that. We want to help that. Actually, Michael from Roswell wants to know that. <laughs> stronger families. Stronger communities. A stronger America. It is this kind of prosperity, broad, shared, built on a thriving middle class, that has always been the source of our progress at home. It's also the foundation of our power and influence throughout the world. Tonight, we stand united in saluting the troops and civilians who sacrifice every day to protect us. Because of them, we can say with confidence, that America will complete its mission in Afghanistan and achieve our objective of okay. defeating the core of Al Qaeda. Uh, everybody stands for that one. Huh? Everybody on your feet. Already, we have brought home 33,000 of our brave servicemen and women. This spring, our forces will move into a support role while Afghan security forces take the lead. Sure. <laughs> Tonight, I can announce 
that over the next year, another 34,000 American troops will come home from Afghanistan. This drawdown will continue. And by the end of next year, our war in Afghanistan will be over. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Boner can't stand up for that one. Beyond 2014, America's commitment to a unified and sovereign Afghanistan will endure. Sure. But the well. nature of our commitment will change. We're negotiating an agreement with the Afghan government that focuses on two missions. Training and okay. equipping Afghan All right. Forces. All right. We have a break coming up here. I... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to um, show such uh, blatant disrespect. Um, I mean, after all, this is the State of the Union message, right? But uh, I, uh, it, it, it's just become impossible for me to sit through one of these. I don't care who the president is. Uh, what they say, have you noticed? If you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. They say exactly the same thing. Democrat, Republican, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, new century, exactly the same thing. And you know that when the State of the Union message is uh, complete and uh, these filthy Republicans and these uh, cowardly Democrats go back to work, um, so to speak, what do you think is going to change? What will be the difference on the horizon Monday? Um, well, hell, for that matter, Thursday. Uh, what's today? This is Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow. Next week, next month. So, you know, excuse my cynicism, but, you know, been here, done that, got the T-shirt. We'll be right back.